big mood shift here. She was kidnapped by a serial killer, a man who took the lives of at least three teenage girls. But Kara Robinson Chamberlain is the one who got away. Before we chat with her, here is Kara's amazing story. I was 15 years old. I was hanging out with a friend at her house. So we called her mother, asked what we should do before we left, if there was anything that she needed, and she asked for us to water the plants outside. And so I volunteered to do that while my friend got ready. And while I was out there, I noticed a car that was driving through the neighborhood. The car pulled directly into the driveway. A man got out, he walked over to me and said, I'm out here, I was giving out these pamphlets, which he had a binder in his arm. And he said, I saw you out here, and so I wanted to know if I could give these to you. And I said, yeah, you can do that. I'll leave them for my friend's mom. That was when he entered my personal space and put a gun to the side of my neck and said, why don't you come with me? He walked me around to the driver's side of his car with his armor on my neck and the gun pressed to the side of my neck the entire time where I saw a large plastic container and he told me to get into the container. While I was in his apartment for 18 hours, I was assaulted multiple times. There would be consequences, good or bad, uh, depending on my behavior. So if I listened and I obeyed, I would have a reward. And if I didn't, there would be a consequence. I knew I would escape from him and I knew that I had to wait on him to become complacent. And so a few hours later was when he actually restrained me to go to sleep. And I was restrained with handcuffs on my wrists that were attached to a uh, rope that came out between the bed and the wall. And woke up in the early morning hours and heard him breathing. He was still asleep next to me. And I realized that that was when I was going to escape. Wow. Please welcome Kara to the show. Kara, Thanks. so grateful you're here. A fascinating and terrifying story. Can you tell us about your escape and how did you break free? Yeah, so my captor was asleep next to me and I had always expected that I would have an opportunity to escape. Most likely when he was asleep, I wanted to wait until he was complacent. And so I woke up, he was asleep next to me and I realized that was it. That was the time to go. So I began trying to unscrew the quick link. It's kind of like a carabiner with a screw clip on it and couldn't do it. I had to do it with my teeth and then kind of slid my hands, the handcuffs out of that and was able to slide one of my wrists out of the handcuffs at that point, disconnected my leg restraint that was on my right leg and slid out of bed and went to the front door where I had to kind of move some things out of the way so that I could get out the door and um, threw the door open and, and ran out and saw a car that I flagged down. Oh my God, the amount of bravery that takes just to start doing that is unbelievable. The escape is Unreal. unbelievable enough, and that's the right word. Yeah. But uh, the question is, how did you survive for those 18 hours? You know, there's this funny thing that happens with all of us, and I say funny because we can't expect it and we can't anticipate it, but we all have this amazing survival mechanism that's within us that it's just so resilient. And so for me, it was a little bit of appease him and get him to become complacent, but it was also this inside fight. So I had more or less a mantra going in my head of make him happy, uh, make him complacent and find an opportunity to escape. So it was just kind of this ongoing thing. And then I also had this compartmentalization that was happening that was also my protection mechanism where uh, my emotions were more or less shut off for the entirety of the time I was with him. Yeah, saved you probably. Wow. That's so you yeah. obviously helped police find your captor. What happened when they started closing in on him? And what was that time frame from when you escaped to when they did finally get him? No question. So immediately after I escaped, law enforcement was pretty quickly able to figure out where he lived and they responded to his apartment, he was gone. So it took a few days for them to actually be able to locate him. They used cell phone towers and this was in 2002, so it's a little bit different, but they triangulated his location as headed down to, Cal to, I'm sorry, to Florida from South Carolina. And he was meeting with his sister. And so they attempted to intercept him. 
He saw them, uh, went on a short police chase where they deployed stop sticks. He kind of wrecked his car and then he ended up shooting himself there on the side of the road in Florida. So it was just a few days, about three days. Wow. So I want to follow up. He did, he did what he did, but was his death justice in your mind or do you wish he had his day in court? You know, I have had some complex feelings over the years about this. So initially when I heard it, I was very, very angry because I did want my day in court. I wanted him to sit across from me and know that choosing me, who was not his intended victim, who was a victim of opportunity, was the biggest mistake he ever made. But I also felt relieved because my parents would never have to sit in a courtroom. <laughs> uh, media would never sit in a courtroom and hear all of the details of yeah. everything that happened to me during the 18 hours that I was there. So good and bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, walk us through the hardest part of transitioning back to life after this experience. I can't imagine what that's like. You know, I think one of the hardest things for me is that I had completely compartmentalized and kind of shut off all emotion around that. So when I went back to school, I was still a 15 year old. I just wanted to go back to school and just be a normal 15 year old and and I was treated differently and people would talk about me instead of talking to me. Mm -hmm. And so for me at the time, that was one of the most difficult things. And and now here I am almost 20 years later and there's there's been it's been a journey and there have been other more difficult things that have happened over the years. Wow, mm -hmm. I just I I just, I don't know. I just see a lot of strength and a lot of it's, courage. It's just almost breathtaking. Yeah, just the, the it's fascinating, the psychology and the yeah. things that you went through, but still have a, a positive outlook, so to speak, on, yeah. on the world. It's it's fascinating to me, and your story is very interesting. Thank Absolutely. DBL Nation, you can watch Kara's documentary called Escaping Captivity, airing now on Oxygen. You can also follow her because she's an advocate. She turned her pain into purpose, which yes. is unbelievable. Follow her advo advo excuse me, advocacy for sexual assault survivors by visiting her website or following her on Instagram. Kara, I know sometimes being called a hero can be a little weird. You are, and you also survived, and you did what you needed to do, and I'm incredibly proud and so grateful you were here with us today. Thank you Thank for you. sharing your story. What a survivor. Wow. We'll be Thank right you. back. Thanks, Kara. Absolutely.